just because our families are dynamic, they're not mm-hmm. static. They're going to be growing and changing. And sometimes you take three steps forward and five steps backwards, and you just need to readjust some things and you don't need right. to be afraid of that. Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I'm back today with my good friend, Zan Tyler. If you have missed the first two parts of this conversation, go back and listen. We are talking about the importance of creating a family vision for your homeschool, what that looks like, why it's important to do that. Um, We talked about the importance of building a family bond. And that was in the last episode. And that's so much fun just thinking about that. And you know, it's hard work. This, this, this parenting thing is not for the faint of heart. It is hard work to do these things, but it's so worth the time and the energy that we put into parenting our kids and homeschooling them. And so go back and listen to those, be encouraged by those. But first, before we dig in, I want to thank our sponsor again, CTC Math. If you guys are looking for a great online math program, go to ctcmath.com. You can try them out for free, ctcmath.com. Um, You know, as we're talking about vision statements, Zan, I, I, I was thinking about this episode and preparing for it. And I I thought, you know, I wonder if people have written vision statements, which I knew that they would, but, uh, you know, I wanted to find some good ones. And so I did a little Googling and um, found a couple that I thought were really good. And this first one that I'm going to read comes from knowledgehouse.info, and I'll put that link in the show notes. And this is what it says. It says, our purpose in homeschooling is to raise children who are godly and spiritually wise as well as skillful and knowledgeable in every area that will be useful to them as they serve and glorify the Lord in their future lives, families, and ministries to others. And I thought that's perfect. Like it perfectly lays out exactly, you know, what I would say would be mine and Garrett's hope and desire and prayer for our girls is that Mm -hmm. we have purpose in our homeschooling. It's not just for the purpose of them, you know, getting straight A's, or passing the test or getting, Mm -hmm. you know, a high score in their standardized testing. It's so that they will know Jesus and glorify him and use those skills and abilities for his kingdom, for their future lives. Because again, we're looking towards their future, right? Yes, yes, yes. So that one is really good. And then this other one is from Crazy Homeschool Life. Um, And I'll put that link in the the show notes as well. I love that that, um, title of her, her blog. And hers was to raise children who understand their worth as members of our family and the community. And it was so simple. Read that again. I like that. Sure. Yeah. It's a simple one, but I love it. And it Mm -hmm. says to raise children who understand their worth as members of our family and the community. Mm, That boy, that is so good. That's so good too. And it can be that simple. It, it, it doesn't have to be anything extravagant. Um, I do want to ask a quick question on this because I want you to kind of tie it all back together. But when creating a family vision, is it something that you do every year or is this something that you set your family vision once and then kind of stick to that vision throughout your homeschooling? You know, I think it's really important for moms, if you can, um, to take a day or a half a day away before a new school year with your husband, if you can do that, uh, trade off with another person if you have problems getting a babysitter, but spend some time praying and really seeking the Lord and asking him what his vision is Mm -hmm. for your family and your school this year. And he'll give you verses and surprise you with ideas, I think. I mean, it always amazes me what the Lord shows us when we do this. So I think you have some basic things that are never going to change. Just like this idea of we want our kids to use their gifts to serve their neighbors and glorify God. I mean, that's a given. Sure. And But then there may be specifics every year, like your one child has a, a, a hard time with math. We need to improve on this. Another child's got a really just a bad attitude about life right now. And we need to circle the wagons around him and help him come out of that funk. You sure. know, so I, I think that every year, just because our families are dynamic, they're not mm-hmm. static. They're going to be growing and changing. And sometimes you take three steps forward and five steps backwards, and you just need to readjust some things. And you don't need right. to be afraid of that. Um, you just need to readjust. And uh, and so I, I do think it's a dynamic process. It's not something that stays the same every yeah. year. 
I, I think so too. And it could be that you have your set family vision statement. Yes. That could be like, this is our life goal yes. this, through your childhood. And that can be a very simple thing. But then you go and figure out for each year, you know, these are the things that we really want to focus on this year. So, um, and you can do whatever works best for your family. It doesn't have to be that either of those. Yes, that's right. Both. And, and, you know, we were talking about funny things that happen in your family. I can remember because vision is my thing. And I obviously had failed one year to convey this vision to my daughter, who's a hoot anyway. <laughs> and um, we were at a homeschool conference and she was probably six or seven. And this little girl came up to her and said, Lizzie, our family vision is this. And pro I think she must have quoted 75 Bible verses. Oh, gosh. Lizzie. <laughs> and she says, Lizzie, what's your family vision? And she said, oh, we're a bunch of jokers who like to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, Frame that. <laughs> yeah, so, so, we, um, so it was funny. I thought, okay, I need to talk to Lizzie about that. <laughs> That's awesome. Some of these other things. But you know, it was just it was just a conversation because sure. we have so many conversations. So I don't want people to be intimidated by this process, sure. but it, it really is a helpful one. Yeah. So it just in terms of having a family vision, if it's a bunch of words at the end of the day, it's not going to mean anything. But because it's a family vision, we've got to realize that that depends on having a family that's growing stronger together. Mm. Not a perfect family, but a family that knows how to work together together. Um, through pain and suffering, through joys and triumphs, through school, through worship, through all of those things. And we live and we grow together. So if it's just two-dimensional and it's something on a piece of paper and it doesn't translate into our real life and relationships, it's meaningless. Yeah. But if we let it impact the Word of God and our thoughts impact our lives and strengthen our families, then it's doing our job because it, the purpose of a family vision is to have a stronger, have a stronger family and right. to have a purpose for that family. Yeah. And that's why what we talked about yesterday of building that family bond of, you know, huddling together as a family and building those relationships with one another is so important because you yes. can't just, you're, you're saying you can't just have the vision statement aside from the relationship, it all works hand in hand. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. You want it, you want it to be like it says about the word of God, it's living and breathing and sharper than right. any two edged sword. It's Martin Luther said, the word of God is alive. It has hands and grabs hold of us and feet and runs after us. And it's not modern or antique. It's eternal. Yeah. So that's, that's how we want our family vision statements to be, to reflect that feeling of really abundant life. Yes. Not yes. sterile, you know, not sterile. Absolutely. And I want to just throw one last thing, but probably the most important thing in building that family bond that we can do is study the word of God together. Amen. And I know we do this day in Amen. and day out, you know, or hopefully you're doing this, you know, when you're, when you're studying with your kids in your homeschool, but this, what I'm talking about is, doing this with your, as a whole family, with your husband, um, you know, hopefully you have a husband who feels like he can lead spiritually. And if you, you don't pray that the Lord would just, you know, convict his heart of that and that the Lord would show him how to do that. We don't have to be Bible scholars in order to read the word of God together, right? That's but man, exactly there's right. so much power in reading God's word together as a family and Absolutely. Um, nothing will bond your family together like studying God's word. So uh, let's take a quick break. We'll be right back. What we do at IEW is break through the, the noise of the grammar and the writing prompts. And we say, this is what you do step by step. And I've witnessed it over and over again, both watching Andrew teach and hearing from parents, this is the best writing program. We've made it so easy and made it really affordable. So any mom can teach writing to their children using our course, and we guarantee it. To try three weeks of free lessons, visit IEW.com. We are back with Zan, and this has been such a fun conversation this week about vision statements, the importance of having a vision statement, a family vision statement, not just a personal vision statement, though that's important too, 
but having a family vision statement for your homeschool. Um, one of the things that we have found with homeschooling is that community is so very important. And we're going to shift gears a little bit here because I want <laughs> Zan to share with us about something that's coming up. Um, having community is so important. And sometimes it's hard to find that, you know, some of us live in communities like myself, where we have an incredible community around us, but even still, I need to have the resources, the encouragement, um, all the things that I need to, in order to home educate my girls with excellence, because that's what we want to do, right? That's right. One of the ways that we do that in today's day and age is with online resources. And so you mentioned before that you work for BJU Press Homeschool. And I know you guys have an exciting online homeschool party coming up. It's the BJU Press Homeschool Online Party, I think is what the actual title is. Yes, we do. And Tell it us is, about that. It is so much fun. It's April 18th through 22nd. It's Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Wow. And we do so many fun things. We've got some great speakers. Christy Clover will be with us, Ginger Hubbard, Isaac Crockett, um, Eugenia, and I will be um, doing some speaking. Eugenia Ch Ch Chisholm is our host. And so we're just going to be having a great time. And then they have all kinds of threads that parents can respond to. What's your favorite vi Bible verse? What's your favorite reason for homeschooling? What's your favorite book, you know, or, or what do you need help with? What are you struggling mm -hmm. with? And then there are all kinds of discounts and giveaways. It's just, it's the most interactive online party I've ever been a part of. So it's just really, really fun. So it's live. It's live. So people right. can sign up to be part of this yes. live party. And then do, I'm, I'm assuming you've got a schedule because I've seen, I've, I've done this in the past with BJU Press Homeschool. Right. And right. I remember there was a schedule that said, okay, this is when this person's speaking and this person, and this is what's going on during these times. And so people, if they want, and you've got to sign up, you've, you've okay. got to register to be a part of it. There's no charge. But it's free. Uh, yes, it's free. Okay. That's right. And it's homeschoolhelp.com forward slash party. And you can go and you can find out and you can read more about the speakers and what's happening and the threads and the discounts, the giveaways, those types of things. Okay. So I would just encourage you, and we'll be releasing more information as we get closer to that date. Okay. But but make make plans to come. It's really the first time I went to this party, I was just blown away at the amount of fellowship and community, like you were saying, that happens here yep. and encouragement. It's really amazing to me. And Ginger, Christy, Isaac, they're just all amazing. Yes. And and our president might not gives usually gives a devotion that centers us for a year. It's amazing. He's just got this gift for that. That so. is so cool. Very fun. Yes. I I I want to say it's been probably maybe it was last year because um, this is an annual event that you do, right? Yes, that's right. Okay, so I think it was last year um, that I was I was part of this one, and it was because I Rick Green was yeah he spoke to that right. one, uh -huh. and I'm trying to remember who else. Um, I can't, I just, I remember watching Rick's Ginger session. spoke last year. She did. Okay. Ginger spoke. Yes. Okay. She's, okay. And she's one of our keynotes. So it's great. It was yeah. Fabulous. This is a great way, especially, you know, we always encourage going to live events, you know, live homeschool conventions and things mm -hmm. like that, but, and, and do that too. But this, especially if you can't make it to a live homeschool convention, this is a really fun way to get some encouragement and doing the live interactive parties is so fun because you can ask the questions, you can engage with the speakers, you can engage with those who are putting this event on real yes. time and yes, ask the questions right. that you need answered. And, um, and, and that is really fun. We've got a bunch of our homeschool consultants uh, that, uh, that are homeschool moms themselves are mm -hmm. always in the threads answering questions. And so you have a question, you get answers. And yeah. we take a lot of orders and give a lot of discounts. So it's really, I don't know, it, it's a real special time. I go to, I, I love the in-person events, but I cannot tell you how special this party, this online party has become to me. Yeah. And uh, so it is, it's really amazing. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So homeschoolhelp.com slash party. That's we'll right. Put that link in the show notes, but you guys, it's an easy one. Homeschoolhelp.com slash party. Go to the link, sign up. It is a free event that you guys can attend and you can do some of it. You can do all of it. You can, you know, do and And if I remember correctly, if they miss a session, 
they can go back and watch it later. That's exactly right. And it's through Facebook, correct? That's right. Yes, it's through Facebook. That's exactly right. Okay, okay. This is a great event. So you guys sign up for this, homeschoolhelp.com slash party. And and I just want to say thank you to you, Zan, and to Mike Knott, and to your whole team there, BJU Press Homeschool. I'm telling you guys, they are such a fantastic resource, incredible curriculum. We, uh, we've been twice at least um, to the BJU campus where they do, they, they have actually the BJU press facility where they create all of their curriculum. And I mean, it, it's, it's an amazing machine in action. And I don't mean a, a machine, but I mean the way everybody, every person works together, you know, from the artists to the curriculum developers. The most impressive thing to me was as we were meeting all of the people who make up BJU Press Homeschool was that they have a whole department that is the biblical worldview yes, department. Fabulous. And, yes. and um, their curriculum writers write something. It has to process through the biblical worldview department, and they back everything up with scripture. They make sure that what is in there is correct according to God's word. And so if you guys are looking for a great Christian curriculum, BJU Press is so fantastic. And you guys, uh, they spon- they've been sponsoring this podcast for quite some time. And without our sponsors and without those of you who support Schoolhouse Rocked financially, we would not have this podcast. We would not have the ministry of Schoolhouse Rocked. And so we are so grateful for BJU Press Homeschool because you guys have been so supportive of the podcast. You sponsored the movie. I mean, it's just been incredible to partner with you on all of these different things because we're working together. It's the body of Christ coming together to teach kids from a biblical worldview. Um, And and we just love what you and Garrett are doing. And we appreciate you both so much. The movie, your ministry, your podcast, everything. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we are thrilled to partner with you. So you guys find it again at homeschoolhelp.com slash party. It'll be fun. I will be um, in as much of it as I can, you know, just joining. So maybe I'll see some of you on there during the live. Um, I mean, I'm not speaking or anything, but just um, interacting, you know, as the different moms interact with one one another, because as you know, I'm just like you, I'm just a homeschool mom who's still trying to figure it all out (laughs) and get my kids to adulthood to love Jesus. <laughs> so, And then you get grandkids and you get to correct all your mistakes. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and spoil them and send them yeah, home. <laughs> that's right. It's so much fun. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm going to tell really quickly. So you guys, during one of our breaks, Zan's 14 year old grandson is at her house right now. And so she said, can I bring my grandson in right now? I just want to show him how podcasting works and what I'm doing right now. And so he came in and I got to chat with him for a minute and it was so much fun. I love that you get to do life with your grandkids I, I still. Love so it. Love it, love such it. a blessing. And again, because you built that family bond with your own kids and now you have that with your grandkids and it's, it is miraculous. I love it so much. So thank you, Zan. Um, for everything that you do. Thank you to BJU Press Homeschool for sponsoring this podcast. And thank you guys for listening and spending time with us today. Once again, you are such a blessing to us. If you've not yet left a review for the podcast, please do that. We would really appreciate it. It is such a blessing to us to hear your reaction and your response and how this podcast is being a blessing to you and to your family. So we would love it if you would leave a review. Have a great rest of your week and we'll see you back here on Monday. Bye. A mom said to me one time, aren't you worried about sheltering your children? And I said to her, we care more about sheltering tomato plants in the culture right now than we do about our precious children. And so if someone wants to accuse me of sheltering my children, my answer is always absolutely yes. I will shelter my child until I know my child can stand up against the elements of the culture so that they can grow to maturity. And we slowly begin to remove the shelter from around them as we see that they are mature and that they understand the battle lines around them and can engage the culture from a position of strength rather than weakness.